Just, okay, two quick questions uh, in the second to last row, and then uh, final question uh, in the back row. Uh, Ruzi Tverdoljak, BJ student from Croatia. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, the question uh, is about NATO. You're mentioning NATO in your book a couple of times, uh, and I was wondering what do you think your um, your opinion about its future growth and um, its need its need in future. Tom, come on. Did you have a question? Oh. Sir? Yeah. Go, please. Okay. I'm Chad Coleman. I'm representing the unemployed. I, I found it particularly <laughs> interesting that you cited Kennedy as the, the only uh, example of the success of proactive behavior internationally. And I, I wonder who you think or what circumstances are required for someone or, or some group of people to, to marshal the same kind of success in the present circumstances. And last question, Rachel. My name is Rachel, and I'm a BGIA student. I was wondering, you cited as your, the successful example the Cold War as um, proactive rather than reactive action. But with the Cold War, it was tangible. Someone knew what a bomb exploding looked like. With climate change, it's not as tangible. So I was wondering how that can be reconciled and how it can be made an urgent matter if it's not something that's easily conveyed to people? Three terrific questions. I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll try to rise to the challenge of the questions. Uh, the lady from uh, Croatia with regard to the future of NATO and the future of the EU, they are intimately linked. And the key thing to bear in mind there is first, that NATO has a history of providing a secure environment in which it has been possible for the European experiment to take place. And I think one reason that your country, which I know extremely well, I lived with my wife uh, in uh, a country that no longer exists called Yugoslavia, uh, used to vacation in Sovtat and Dubrovnik and places like that, and the horror that befell your country came about in part because Yugoslavia was outside this zone of peace and cooperation that had uh, grown up after World War II. And it is a great, the good news is uh, that uh, that is behind us now. And one by one, the former Yugoslav states are coming into that zone and into the European uh, Union. And, and I think for that reason, it is essential that the door not be closed to further expansion of NATO. Uh, but I don't think you'll see this administration rushing ahead with regard to Georgia and Ukraine for different reasons, uh, but for, for valid reasons. But it's very important that they not give in to pressure, which they will feel from Russia, uh, to close the door irrevocably. With regard to uh, uh, Kennedy, I, I think what I said in my remarks was Kennedy and his successors. Uh, he, was, uh, he made uh, a very important opening step, but, but Dwight Eisenhower deserves credit for it as well. We have had, if I'm not mistaken, 11 presidents since FDR, six Democrats and five Republicans before George W. Bush. And all of them contributed substantially to strengthening the role of the United States as a kind of master builder of an architectural world order. Uh, President, the second President Bush was something of an aberration, I think. And we are now getting back to the reinstatement of a tradition that has been there in American foreign policy since the end of the war. Um, your question with regard to the difference between uh, the threat of World War III and the threat of climate change is spot on. And I've worried about that myself. We did know what a mushroom cloud looked like. Not only that, I can remember when I was a small kid being horrified and having nightmares about pictures of children from children and others, but particularly children who had been fried by radio, radio, the, the, the blasts in Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Uh, so that was, there was something real about the threat of World War III. I do think that for a variety of reasons, including in the ways in which the climate is already changing, what we know from Al Gore's work about shrinking glaciers, what we can see already in terms of rising sea levels, that people are beginning to get it. And it goes back a little bit to uh, the constructive disagreement I have with this gentleman in the front row about whether we as a species are, care are capable of what I would call prospective 
empathy or prospective self-interest. Uh, that is projecting our self-interest to include not just ourselves and our physical being, but our progeny as well. That is an essential issue, I think. We're out of time. I just wanted to, uh, couldn't let you go without having some career advice for the students, because once you're done... But you're going to give me some career advice. <laughs> <laughs> I could use it. We're both former journalists who found another path to go down. You're looking at the students are looking at, what do I do? I have certain ideals, certain goals, certain ambitions to make the world a better place. You're, t you're addressing this to the idea of the global governance, of the sense of the global community, etc. If you had a choice to go to work as a diplomat in the Department of State to represent the United States to build this kind of a world, or to work, go to work over here at the United Nations or a similar international organization, assuming salaries are the same, bureaucratic frustrations are the same, all of this. Which would you advise them to do, State Department or UN? That's, that's either an easy or a hard question. I, th I think it's a false choice. Uh, I think either of them would be great careers. And uh, I hope that it will become easier and easier as time goes on for, something, for, the, for the students here to do something that is already possible and that is to have a career as a Foreign Service officer, but do time, as it were, uh, at the United Nations and in the international system. There are a lot of examples of that. Uh, and I guess the note I should end on is that this kind of a self-selecting audience, anybody uh, of whatever age, but this is addressed particularly to the students here, on a day as beautiful as this, who would come indoors to look at this stuff and talk about these subjects, obviously doesn't need any career advice. They're already headed in the right direction. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I think there's uh, you know, the, the construct you have with the uh, overlapping circles. Those two overlapping circles uh, will hopefully uh, increase uh, their overlap over time. And Garrick, you and I can sit down together on another occasion over an adult beverage and talk about what's happened to the profession that you and I went into. That's the one that's really in trouble. And maybe some of you can figure out a way to, to, uh, to save the, the media from the forces that are dragging it down. But uh, good luck to you all, whatever you're going to do. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much.